Hello everybody. Uh, today we are going to uh, learn about error control coding. Uh, some topics of error control coding will be uh, discussed through this screencast. Uh, first of all, uh, let us see what are the important aspects of error control coding. It is possible to detect and uh, correct errors by adding extra bits uh, which are called as a check bits to the message stream. Uh, you can append the check bits after your message or you can interlude these bits into the uh, stream of uh, message bits. However, it is not possible to detect and correct all errors because every system has some advantages it has, I mean, some disadvantages or loopholes. So it may not be possible for uh, correcting all the errors. Uh, at the same time, the addition of check bits uh, can reduce effective data rate. So you have already studied how uh, addition of check bits or uh, addition of extra bits or redundancy may uh, reduce uh, efficiency of the code. Uh, <clears throat> now how to cope up these uh, transmission errors? Basically these errors arise because of the noise which we have already discussed. Uh, there are two types of codes. The first type of code is error detection code and the second is error correction code or it is also called as a forward correction codes. <coughs> the error detection codes has the capability to detect the presence of an error in the message and it, it, it performs the uh, detection of the error. While uh, the error correction codes can uh, detect as well as correct the errors. So this type of uh, error correction mechanism is called as a forward correction codes or forward error correction. And right now this, uh, this type of codes are widely used in the wireless networks. Uh, <coughs> there is one more uh, type of protocol that is uh, used in conjunction with the uh, error detection or correction capability and that is called as automatic request, repeat request protocols. Uh, here uh, uh, in this ARQ protocols the block of data with error is discarded and the transmitter has to retransmit that block of data. So receiver sends the information to the transmitter whether the block of data is correctly received or not. <coughs> A few error detection mechanisms are uh, mentioned here. Uh, the transmitter for a given frame and encrypting code is calculated from data bits, that is check bits. These check bits are appended to data bits or interlude into the messages. At receiver, the receiver separates incoming frame into data bits and check bits and calculates check bits from the received data bits. Now, if the uh, the calculated check bits are sim uh, are compared with the uh, received check bits and if they are uh, same, then there is no error. And if there is a mismatch, it, it means there is an error. So, it discards the received sequence and notifies the transmitter to retransmit the message. Thus, the detector attempts to detect errors but not to attempt correct the errors. So, this type of uh, coding scheme is called as an error detection process. Uh, let's see uh, a type of error detection uh, coding scheme. Uh, one of those scheme is uh, parity check. Uh, the parity bit is appended to a block of data. There are again two types of parities, even parity and odd parity. Uh, what do you mean by even parity? In even parity, the added bit ensures an even number of ones in the given message block. Suppose uh, th there is one example given. There is a 7-bit character 1110001. So, uh, so it has even number of uh, ones. So its parity is even. Uh, you can you can make it as odd parity by by ensuring that the number of ones is odd. So to have a odd parity the number of ones in the message should be odd. <coughs> so this type of uh, uh, parity check you may better learn in the lab. There is a one more type of uh, error detection scheme that is cyclic redundancy check. So in the transmitter of this CRC there is a uh, suppose there is a k bit block of message then transmitter generates an n minus k bit frame check sequence the resulting frame of n bits is exactly divisible by a predetermined number. This predetermined number is important because the same predetermined number is available with the receiver. The receiver divides the incoming frame by this predetermined number 
and if there is no reminder it assumes that there is no error uh, let's go to the forward error correction mechanism that is uh, error correcting uh, by using error correcting codes usually this type of uh, mechanisms are used for the uh, delay sensitive and one-way transmission systems like broadcast TV of data or uh, one-way transmission of data or broadcast TV so basically there are two types of codes which are used for forward error correction and those are the block codes and convolutional codes uh, specifically we'll discuss block codes in this uh, lecture <coughs> uh, types of errors we have already discussed in the last uh, class that is Gaussian noise impulse noise and random error correcting schemes uh, basically the <coughs> Uh, types of noises are Gaussian and impulse noise. Gaussian is because of uh, thermal and short noise, whereas impulse noise is because of the lightning and switching transients, which affects more than one bit interval. Then the types of codes, block codes and convolutional codes. Uh, we'll discuss block codes right now and convolutional codes maybe after a few uh, lectures. Then the error detection and correction capabilities of linear block codes. Here we'll, we may discuss something about Hamming, uh, weight, Hamming uh, distance. Okay, so what do you mean by Hamming weight? The Hamming weight of the code word is defined as the number of non-zero components of the given code word. Suppose uh, a few code words are listed here in this table. So weight of the Hamming weight of the each code word is also mentioned in this column. First of all, let's see there is a code word of uh, six zeros, so zero, 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 zero. Then the Hamming weight of the first code word is zero because the number of ones in this code word or the number of non-zero components in this code word is uh, zero. In the second code word, the number of non-zero uh, components is three, so its weight is three. So similarly, you can find the Hamming weight of all such code words and those code words are mentioned in this figure now what do you mean by Hamming distance uh, the error control capability of any uh, error correcting codes it is determined by the Hamming distance the Hamming distance between two code words the Hamming distance between two code words is equal to the number of differences between them uh, let's have an example <coughs> Suppose there are two code words 10011011 and 11010010. Now you just have to find the uh, distance that is the uh, distance between two code words. Uh, it means the number of differences between them. Suppose let's see this first uh, LSB bit. So here in the first code word it is 1 and in the second code word it is 0. So it's uh, there is a difference. So similarly in the fourth bit there is a difference and in the seventh bit there is a difference so uh, in total uh, three bits have the differences so its Hamming distance is three so alternatively uh, you can compute this uh, Hamming distance by uh, performing the mod to operation and the by performing the mod to operation you got you get this result what do you mean by mod to mod to operation can be done by using XORing operation so if you perform the XORing operation of these two code words so you may get the result where you may find there are three ones and so it's Hamming distance is three <coughs> now if you find out the Hamming distances for all such code words you may uh, come to the point that is the minimum distance the minimum distance of a block code is the smallest distance between any pair of the code words in the code. So depending on this minimum distance, there are two theorems mentioned here. So the first theorem that is theorem 1, it, it states that the minimum distance of a linear block code is equal to the minimum weight of any non-zero word in the code. Uh, let's see this example. <coughs> so what is the minimum distance of this uh, type of code words? So it is 3 because this is the minimum weight of the uh, code words and so its dimin is 3 the theorem 2 states that a linear block code with a minimum distance dimin so here it is 3 in uh, in the previous example so it can correct up to dimin minus 1 by 2 errors 
if if you put d min is equal to 3 3 minus 1 by 2 it comes as a 1 by 2 and if you take it to <coughs> Uh, sorry, uh, 3 minus 1 by 2 is 1, so it can correct up to 1 errors and it can detect up to d min minus 1 errors. So, if you put d min is equal to 3, you will get uh, 1 as a d min minus 1 by 2 and uh, 2 as a d min minus 1. So, it, so this type of code word uh, can correct up to 1 error and uh, detect 2 errors. So, this is the Hamming distance. Now the maximum number of detectable errors is d min, my, d min minus 1 and uh, maximum number of correctable errors is given by t is equal to d min minus 1 by 2. <coughs> now let's move to the linear block codes. Here in the linear block codes the given information is divided into blocks of length k and to each such block of length k r parity bits are added. So, the total length of the code word becomes n is equal to k plus r. So, here k is the size of uh, message uh, or the length of message and r is the number of check bits. So, from this you can find its code rate. So, here code rate is equal to k by n. Now, the decoder looks uh, for code word closest to received vector. What is the received vector? It is a code vector plus error vector. Now, this concept we may discuss in detail in the given example. <coughs> now, how to how to generate code words by using the linear encoder in case of linear block codes? So, there is a linear transformation where C is equal to M into G. C means code word and M is the messages and G is the generator matrix. So, here G is the K by N matrix, K rows and N uh, columns, matrix of rank K of elements from GF2. Now, here GF2 means Galois field of 2. Now, here Galois, Galois field is, uh, it is out of scope of your syllabus. So, I am not going into detail about Galois field. So, this is very important part, but uh, <coughs> you may find it in future in any other advanced course. The rows of G are linearly independent since G is assumed to have a rank of K. Now what is the process followed or what are the operations of uh, encoding and decoding uh, which are performed at transmitter and receiver in case of linear block codes. So first of all there is a message vector M then it is multiplied by a generator matrix so you may get code vector C. This is for transmitter and at receiver there is a code vector which is received it may be errored okay, due to some noises this code vector may be errored. So to find out whether there is an error or uh, error free message is received you have to multiply the received code vector by the parity check matrix as transpose and you if you if you get null vector it means there is no error. Now let let us see uh, how it happens. Uh, let R is equal to C XOR with error bit be the received message. <coughs> C is the correct code and E is the error. Now you may compute syndrome. S is the syndrome. Syndrome is equal to uh, syndrome is here. It, it should be R. So R multiplied by S transpose. So it becomes C XOR with E and ultimately it becomes C into S transpose. So uh, we'll see this in detail in the next part. <coughs> so first of all how to find out linear block code. So your linear block code C is equal to M into G. M, M is the information that is a si let's say uh, 1100 it is a message M. G is the generator matrix. Uh, how to how to write generator matrix how to find H everything will be discussed in the example so here G is nothing but a it is a generator matrix it, it is composed of identity matrix of size K and a parity matrix here parity matrix is an arbitrary matrix of uh, size K n by n <coughs> uh, sorry n minus K by n minus K uh, the parity check matrix, how to find parity check matrix and what is the use of H? H is used in the decoder to decode the codes. 
So here to find edge, you have to find P of uh, P transpose. So here you may you may find P transpose from generate.